A lot of weak people right here. We're gonna go ahead and break this Odin wall. Enhance our one, try to get some additional damage off. We get rooted. We're gonna go ahead and activate our two, get the slow and protection reduction. The enemy curb, this is very weak. We're gonna go ahead and use our ultimate. We're gonna bite down. We're able to get the pick onto the Kribdis. We're able to get the pick onto the Odin. The enemy Scylla is here. If we could have gotten the bite onto Scylla, that would have been a pick. That would have been a triple. Now we could just focus on this Athena. Missing a lot of basic attacks. She is very weak. We're gonna go ahead and activate our three so that way we can catch up to her. Make sure that's amplified to get the total movement speed. We get our two off, that should slow her. That's a good pluck, and we're able to clean up the Athena. What a do, skibbity boo, it's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we're going to be playing Charybdis and Carrie. If you are new to the channel, I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intentions of seeing what went right, what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If there is something that we learn together, make sure you check out the channel and subscribe for more content. As always, the full build is in the description down below. If you are a returning viewer, Kribdis is an auto attack based hunter who has a Scylla ult for her ultimate. I played a lot of Kribdis games the other day and I feel like this one kind of stuck out as the best performance. So let's go ahead and jump into her kit. Kribdis is passive. Raging Tides, Kribdis' attack speed increases as her tide increases. Successful basic attack hits increase her tide. Kribdis deals less damage with item effect procs. The tide attack speed is going to be 10 plus 0.75 per level at max tide. The item reduction is reduced by 35%. The basic attacks are going to restore 2% tide on hit. Kribdis is 1, Spike Shot. Kribdis reveals the maw and fires large spikes for a short duration dealing basic attack damage. These projectiles pass through minions and are wider and faster than normal basic attacks. On hitting enemy gods and walls, the spikes splinter dealing additional damage. The minion damage at level 1 is going to be 60% and then at level 5 it's going to be 100%. The splinter tide is going to be 2% tide per hit. The duration is 4 seconds. Charybdis is 2. Capsize. Charybdis absorbs water from around her before firing a quick blast from the maw. Enemies are hit by a rapidly decaying slow and physical protection debuff. This ability can be channeled for longer, consuming tide on fire, become wider, strengthening the buff effects and dealing more damage. The slow is going to be 40% on max tide. The physical protection reduction is 40% on max tide. The duration is 4 seconds on max tide. Charybdis is 3. Whirlpool form. Charybdis dives into a whirlpool. She creates expanding and revealing the terrifying maw. Charybdis moves faster and deals damage to enemies caught. Charybdis moves faster and deals damage to enemies caught in the area. This ability can be amplified by toggling it again and spending 30% tide. Doing so increases the damage dealt and movement speed as well as providing extra damage and a knockup upon exiting. While submerged, Charybdis is untargetable and immune to damage for up to 3 seconds. The base movement speed is going to be 20%, the amplified movement speed is going to be 40%. And finally, Charybdis' ultimate, the Maw Hungers. Charybdis reveals her true nature, becoming immune to crowd control for the next 6 seconds and gaining movement speed. She may make one powerful attack as the Maw charges forward, damaging and carrying back enemies hit before chomping down, damaging again and stunning. If she kills an enemy god with the attack, she gains another for 6 seconds and may attack again. The movement speed increase is 35%. The stun duration is 1.3 seconds. In terms of the leveling order, at level 1, we want to put a point to her 1. Level 2, put a point to her 2. Level 3, put a point to her 3. Level 4, another point to her 2. We want to max out our ultimate whenever we can. Max out her 2, max out her 1, max out her 3. I tried starting with the 1 and 2 in different games. I felt like the 2 was a little bit stronger, but this game we started with the 1. In terms of the start, we started with Gilded Arrow and Tier 1 of Ball. Gilded Arrow did just receive a buff, it now provides 20 basic attack damage, 50 health, and 7 MP5. As a passive, that every 10 seconds, the highest health enemy minion or jungle monster within 80 units of you is going to be marked. If you secure the killing blow on the target, you're going to gain 7 bonus gold and 20% attack speed for 8 seconds, as well as restore 20 mana. We are going against the Charybdis. I feel like the Charybdis v Charybdis matchup is never very fun. Matchups are not very fun in general, but if the enemy Kribdis uses her ultimate, you use your three, you use your ultimate, the enemy Kribdis uses her three. I feel like Kribdis definitely plays better into characters that are not Kribdis. 
We hit level 5, so we do have our ultimate. We're going to activate our 1. Try to get some damage off. We're going to go ahead and use our ultimate. We miss our chomp, which is unfortunate. Cryptus does have an attack chain. It is a single hit, single hit, and then she throws three daggers. The three daggers together deal the same amount of damage as one basic attack. So I feel like there's no point in trying to like s ensure that you land the third basic attack instead of using like, an ability or something. On some characters like Neja, if you're already deep in the attack chain, you want to finish it out because the last hit deals extra damage. That is not the case with Cryptus. For our relic we went with beads, we are going against a Loki. Beads is going to be helpful for the Athena. It's also going to be okay for the enemy Cryptus. We're going to go ahead and use our three. In order to use the amplified three, we need a little bit of tide in our passive meter. Oh, we got our wiggle shoes on. We were trying to avoid this Athena. She used her heavenly wings. We are able to dodge her dash. We're going to use our three and we should be able to get out. We do have enough money for Icky Ball. We're going to go ahead back, pick up Icky Ball. Icky Ball is going to provide us 30% attack speed and 35 physical power. As a passive, the every successful basic attack increases your physical power by 15 and reduces the attack speed of your opponent by 7% for 5 seconds. This can stack 3 times. So we can gain up to 45 additional physical power. Ideally, we want to have our three stacks of Icky Ball before using our abilities. So that way our abilities scale off that additional power. I'm going to go ahead, step up, hit another wave. Now we won't miss any XP if we go for a camp, so we're going to start rotating back, hit our purple buff. The purple buff is going to give us 10% increased attack speed. The enhance is going to give us 25% increased attack speed. With Gilded Air, we don't really need any kind of mana potions. We are going to be recovering a decent amount of mana if we're getting the final hit onto the enemy or whatever is marked. I do feel like there's a little bit of weirdness going on with Charybdis' ultimate. If your ult is going to like land close to a wall or an enemy made uh, wall, like a Bracken ult or a mirror wall, it doesn't want to launch. And it feels really weird. It's like you push the button and it just says no. I feel like it should let you and just shorten the, the distance. We're able to get the pick onto the enemy crib, just used your three too early. So if it happens this game, I'll try to point it out. Since we just got a pick onto the Charybdis, we're going to go ahead and make a play for the Draugr. The Draugr received some small changes. It's basically the same, but now there's a global notification if it gets destroyed. We're going to go ahead back and start working on Aussie. Do my daggers need sharpening? The way we want to use Cribdus' hit is we want to hit an enemy with a 2, slow them, activate our 1, and start trying to land enhanced basic attacks onto them. The enhanced basic attacks, chunk. And then whenever we're in trouble, we're going to use our 3 to get away. And we also have our ultimate if our 3 is on cooldown. Do not be afraid to use your ultimate for that 35% increased movement speed to try to get away from a bad situation. <laughs> She was able to secure that. We're gonna hit her with her two. Activate her one. Take her below half health. We use her ult. 
get the stun, and we're able to clean her up with a basic attack. Her three must have been on cooldown. We're gonna go ahead and set up a ward, check our purple buff. Right there, we could shoot her one at the wall and have these spike shots bounce off and deal additional damage. Since we had the pick, we felt like we're just gonna clear it. We don't need the additional damage, really. This poor enemy Cryptus is only level six. We've got quite the level lead on her. In the early game, when clearing wave, you definitely want to land your two on the enemy minion wave and then activate your one. This will allow you to get your two off the cooldown a little bit quicker. We are max tied right now, so we're gaining 35% additional attack speed. Two people crashing in on us. We're going to use our three. Just completely avoid this Athena. Fenrir comes in, we're gonna activate her too. We get taunted, we're gonna use our beads. Pretty late beads from us, we're able to get the pick onto the Scylla. We get stunned by the enemy Crypt's ultimate. Used our enhanced one. We're gonna use our ultimate. Get a chomp, miss everything. Loki's now here. We're gonna use our three and just skedaddle. We do have enough money for Aussie, so we're gonna go ahead and take this time to back. We thought we saw some kind of Loki. So we're going to back it up and then just continue our back. We're going to go ahead and pick up Aussie. Aussie is going to provide us 25 physical power, 20% physical lifesteal, 25% attack speed, and 15 flat physical penetration. It has a passive that if you drop below 35% health, you're going to gain an additional 30% physical lifesteal for 5 seconds. This can only occur once every 15 seconds. I like putting lifesteal into my attack speed builds. I feel like that's just a personal preference, but I did have a lot of success with this build. Hiding, are we? Good. I hated them. If I had to compare the Scylla ultimate to the Charybdis ultimate, I think the Scylla ultimate is a little bit better. Being able to just shoot over things and then it just be a circle, I think is a little bit stronger than it having to push things and then be like a half circle. Might be a little bit of bias because I've played Scylla a lot more than I have Charybdis, so her ultimate is just a lot more comfortable for me. However, I do think it is a little bit better than the Charybdis Ultimate. I'm gonna go ahead and step up, hit her with the two, get the slow. I'm gonna activate her one. Get some enhanced shots, go ahead and use our ultimate. We try to bite, but then we can't. That's one of those situations where we tried to bite and it didn't like trying to go between the wall and the tower. Then it didn't like going at the tower. In that situation, I feel like it should fire and just stop short. Oh, so let's see we're gonna use our three. So still ultimate and a Charybdis ultimate. We use our beads and an Aegis, kind of a panic. Probably didn't need to use both right there. But with that ult, I feel like whenever we tried to fire it between the tower and the wall, it should have fired and then just stopped whenever it would have touched the tower. Burn my ultimate, don't tell me I can't ult. 
That's kind of my preference on it. We are playing with four people. This guy's got a lot of background noise going on. So we unmute him. We hear it and we just remute him. After picking up Aussie, we're going to start going into Odysseus's bow or Oboe. Right now, we currently have top heels, top gold. I'm going for jungle buff. Tactical fury. On my way. Enemy Charybdis is nearby, but I think we can secure the greatest scorpion. Yeah, we've got four here. We're definitely going to secure it. We're telling Fenrir, please. please don't drop our purple. We'd like that XP. Sorry. No. I need the jungle okay. box. Quiet. It's he's just taking a little bit of XP away from us. I prefer when our junglers don't do that to us. We are able to secure the jogger. Our enemy is just sitting back, so I feel like we need to start looking to rotate towards mid. Your left tower is under On my way. There's nobody in mid, so I don't know if this is going to be the best rotation. We're going to try to get some damage onto the Scylla. We get the slow. Get some good damage with our one. We're going to use our ultimate. We get the damage onto the Scylla, but unfortunately it's not enough to get the pick. Cryptus' ultimate does a lot of damage, but also scales pretty hard off of power. Right now we just don't have a lot of power in our build, and I feel like a lot of the builds that are going to be used on Cryptus don't have power, or a ton of power in general. Like, they're not purely focused on power. To whereas with the Scylla ultimate, those builds are focused on power. I think Scylla ultimates are always going to slap a little harder than Cryptus ultimates. We do have enough money for Oboe, but we're going to go ahead and try to hit the Gold Fury. Enemy Scylla's here. In the comms, I'm saying back off. Enemy is able to secure it, and of course they are. They have a Scylla here. That's zero surprise. Our ult is down. We need to be a little careful right here. We do want to help this Fenrir out. We're going to activate her too. Get the slow. Use her beads onto the Loki. Get the pick onto the Loki. The Sidon's able to get the pick onto the Athena. We are level 17, highest level in the lobby. We're going to go ahead and hit one more wave. We're going to go ahead back and pick up Oboe. Odysseus' bow is going to provide us 40% attack speed. It has a passive that every fourth basic attack triggers a chain lightning, damaging the target and up to four nearby enemies for 15 plus 60% of your total basic attack power. We try to help the Fenrir out. We're in a little bit of trouble right here. Fenrir goes in, uses his ultimate. We feel like we need support. We use our three to avoid a lot of damage from that Scylla. We get hit by the Crypto's ultimate. I don't know why we didn't get stunned. 
We try to use our ultimate for damage when we should have used our ultimate to just run away. So that was a little bit of a misplay. We're like, he's under tower. If we can get our ult off, we're going to get the pick. But realistically, we should have been like, <laughs> there's two pushing us. We have one shot. We need to get out of here. After going into Obo, we're going to start working on picking up Silver Branch Bow. Gribdis doesn't have a natural attack speed stem, but her passive is an attack speed stem. She can gain up to 35% attack speed from her passive whenever it's fully stacked. Looks like there's two people over in left. Our solo goes down. We're gonna go ahead and make our way to the left line where the fight is. A lot of weak people right here. We're gonna go ahead and break this Odin wall. Enhance our one, try to get some additional damage off. We get rooted. We're gonna go ahead and activate our two, get the slow and protection reduction. The enemy curb, this is very weak. We're gonna go ahead and use our ultimate. We're gonna bite down. We're able to get the pick onto the curb, this. We're able to get the pick onto the Odin. The enemy Scylla is here. If we could have gotten the bite onto Scylla, that would have been a pick. That would have been a triple. Then we could just focus on this Athena. Missing a lot of basic attacks. She is very weak. We're going to go ahead and activate our 3 so that way we can catch up to her. Make sure that's amplified to get the total movement speed. We get our 2 off. That should slow her. That's a good pluck. And we're able to clean up the Athena. That's 3 down on the enemy team. Kind of a soft triple for ourselves. Almost a quad. If we would have connected with that Scylla. We're going to go ahead and secure the Pyromancer. The Pyromancer is going to provide our team with a buff that is available for one minute. The buff is going to provide us 40% increased movement speed for 15 seconds when we leave the fountain. So it's really good to get it back by and then get back to lane. And you should have increased movement speed from it. We went ahead and picked up Silver Branch Bow. Silver Branch Bow is going to provide us 30 physical power, 30% attack speed, and 10% physical penetration. It has a passive that for each 0.2 attack speed you go over the cap, you gain 2 physical power. So if we look at our items on the left, right now we have 32. Whatever that number is, multiply it by 2, and that's how much additional power you're getting from Silver Branch. Help left lane. Retreat right lane. Defend the Ally fire giant on my way. Good. I, I feel like our team is just not collapsing together. Like... They'll have four people attacking too, and then our team just is not going to respawn. Enemy team is able to secure the fire giant. That is no good. We get Odin Cage. We're going to use our three. Not sure if we can go under, but we can. We take some damage. We do have our ultimate if we need to scare battle. Feel like we're still getting good damage off. We're gonna keep trying to fight this. We are not gonna use our three to pursue. We don't know where the enemy team is. But we could be using our three and going right into them. We get rooted, we're gonna use our beads. That's an Athena ult. We are gonna use our three to get out of that. We do not wanna get taunted into a Scylla. So that gets great pluck. We're going to activate it too. She uses her beads, so there's no slow. We got some good damage off. Unfortunately, she is able to get out of there. 
This is an ideal fight for us. We're just landing damage from the back line. We're gonna use our ultimate. We get the pick onto one. Use ultimate again. Get the pick onto two. We get our ult. Get the stun onto two. Nice little double. That's a Loki ult. Activate our one. Get the enhanced basic attacks. Oh, if we could clean it up. I think we just missed one too many basic attacks right there. We did have our three, but we were going for the triple. I feel like games where you're landing multi-kills on your ultimate consistently, you're going to be getting lots and lots of kills. But if you're missing on your ult all game, you're not going to have nearly as many kills. You won't be able to snowball as hard. We went ahead and picked up Kinsai. Kinsai is going to provide us with 40 physical power and 20% attack speed. It has a passive that on basic attack hits deal physical damage equal to 3% of the target's maximum health. If the target had over 2,000 health, this bonus damage scales up. This effect reaches a maximum of 5% of the target's maximum health at 2,750. It's a great item for removing the enemy's health. It's really helpful against tanks. But with Charybdis, she only deals 65% of that damage. However, if you do the math, three basic attacks would deal about 100 or 300% of the damage, but 5 times 65 is a little over 300, so if you land every basic attack, including the chain of 3, you're going to be dealing more damage from item procs than you would be without it, or with, you would deal more damage than a normal character. We use our two, that's beside an ultimate, we're gonna use our enhanced one. Try to get some consistent damage off. Right now we're in the front line, this is not where we wanna be. We're gonna use our Bs, use our three, fall back to the back line. We use our two, we got taunted, we're gonna have to use our ultimate to get out. Unfortunately, Poseidon was able to get the last hit onto that Loki instead of us and our ultimate. So we cannot use our ultimate again. So many people so weak. We're going to use our Aegis. We do have to fall back here. We're going to go ahead and set up some wards around Fire Giant. We definitely do want to secure this next Fire Giant. We see Athena, so we're going to start backing up. Go ahead and enhance our one. We're gonna use our three to get out of the Odin cage. Not the best target selection from that Fenrir going for the Odin. It would've been nice to get a squishy. That's a Loki behind us. We're gonna go ahead and use our ultimate. We do not get a pick. They're all so weak. Give us our ult again. Let us have round two. Fenrir is able to get a triple. We get the pick onto the Loki. I'm gonna go ahead and life seal up off the wave, try to get this next tower, and then make a play for Fire Giant.
For some reason, we got targeted by the tower instead of the Jean-Cui. We use our three to get out, we get slowed, basic attack, and we go down. There go our fire giant plants. I thought Zhongkui had dealt some damage to that Charybdis, however, we were closer to the tower, so the tower targeted us. Unfortunate, because if we were up, we would have been able to get Fire Giant. I think that actually is going to cost us a lot more than not getting the Fire Giant, which is a shame. We went ahead and finished off our build by picking up Diamond Arrow. Diamond Arrow is going to provide us 80 basic attack damage and 100 health. It has a passive that if you kill an enemy, you're going to gain 7 gold and 20% attack speed for 8 seconds. This can stack up to 3 times. If you kill an enemy god, you gain 3 stacks and 21 gold immediately. We need wards. Ward the fire giant. So with no tide, no purple buff, our silver branch is not doing a lot for us. But if we have purple, we have our tide fully up, and then we get three minions picks or an enemy god pick, our silver branch is going to be doing wonders for us. They are on fire giant. We got activator two. We are dealing good damage to their tanks. We're able to get the pick onto the enemy Charybdis. We're going to activate our two, get the slow onto the Scylla. Scylla is able to dash away. We're going to get to use our three aggressively. We do want to chase her down. Loki is nearby. Our team's getting picked. We're going to get the pick onto the Loki. We used our ultimate for some CC immunity and also some additional movement speed. To get the chomp onto the Odin and some basic attacks, somebody else is pushing from behind. It looks like it's the Athena. We're going to use our three to get away. We feel like we have to fight. Athena dashes in and is able to get the pick onto us. Unfortunate. Our team just got picked apart. I feel like we were winning. We had the numbers and then just all of a sudden we didn't. We're going to go ahead and buy the upgraded version of our relics. I also should have picked up the power potion. We are top damage, top kills, top gold. 13, 5, and 7. I feel like a few of our deaths were pretty preventable. So all around, I feel like we're having a really solid game with Charybdis. I really like this build. You just absolutely chunk in the late game. We're going to get these our 3, get over to the fire giant a little bit quicker. Fenrir goes down. We're able to get the pick onto the enemy Charybdis. Scylla is here. We get hit by her too. We're gonna pop a health potion. Start falling back a little bit. Bread and life steal off the harpies. Right now we have over a thousand health. We wanna keep fighting this. Odin's doing a great job zoning. We're able to really chunk him. He uses his ultimate. We break a wall, but the wall goes straight into a, a non-breakable wall. We're going to go use our two. The enemy team is able to skip the fire giant. Really weird mechanic right there. Still back block, but the pull. We get hit by a single ability by Scylla and just get blown up. We had over a thousand health. Yet her ability did over a thousand damage. 
That is a full deicide off of a bad push to try to get them to not get fire giant. Sometimes that's just how the mop flops. Unlucky. Fenrir goes down. I think that is going to be it. Next person up is in 23 seconds. They are on the Phoenix. Not the ideal game in terms of the victory versus the feat that I wanted to post, but it was a really good game. I will be posting a victory in the upcoming days, so make sure you check out the channel and subscribe for that. Thank you, everybody, for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>